Welcome back to FN TV at MWC 25. I'm Steve Saunders and I'm excited to welcome Jeff Wittick, the Chief Product Officer at Ampere Computing, a leader in innovative cloud and edge computing solutions. With a focus on energy efficiency and sustainability, Ampere is at the forefront of developing products that meet the growing demand for cloud native environments. Jeff, you are operating in an exciting but crowded market. Uh, how does Ampere differentiate itself from its competition? Yeah, great question. Uh, so we've been building processors for cloud environments for the last six or seven years. And high performance, but also efficient processors has really been our, our focus in that space. And so increasingly, those same types of high performance, power efficiency needs are relevant not just in big cloud data centers, but also in telco and at the edge. Okay, uh, great answer. Uh, cloud native solutions are growing in popularity, which is good for you. How are you modifying your product roadmap uh, to accommodate those demands? Yeah, well, the good thing is, is that as the cloud becomes ubiquitous, those same types of environments, the same types of software stacks, and the same performance needs, needs for applications like AI, it was that becomes prevalent in telco and edge applications, the same things that we did in the cloud uh, help us in, in this space as well. So from a hardware perspective, the good thing is the things that we did with our Ampere Ultra and Ampere One processors, those all still hold in the telco space. We've really focused on working with partners and ensuring the whole software stack, as well as the other hardware vendors that are needed who are building entire systems and, and other pieces of hardware to make sure all that comes together in an Ampere solution for telco. So you have an ecosystem of partners that you've developed. Can you can you mention any? I can. Yeah. So we do have an ecosystem of partners, uh, and so we've been uh, doing a lot of work with folks like Canonical and Suse on the software side. We've also mm -hmm. been working with Cinex G, Fujitsu, Orex, uh, building out full solutions, and that's allowing us to uh, get these into trials and you know, make them available for. Uh, commercial POCs uh, right now. Ah, that's fantastic. Yeah. I mean, ecosystem is one of the big buzzwords at this mm -hmm. event, but sustainability is another one. Uh, can you tell us about any initiatives you have around energy efficiency and sustainability? How's that going? Uh, it's going really great. Th that's really, you know, at the heart of it. Obviously, you have to have a high performance processor uh, for it to play in this space. But the real big differentiator is that we're delivering all that performance at very, very low power. And power has become uh, really the biggest limiter to the continued uh, growth of, of compute. And again, that's true out in, in big data centers, but increasingly it's true out at the edge and in telco as well, because mm -hmm. there you're trying to fit a lot of performance, many times more than you needed a couple of years ago because of AI, you know, in a really small power envelope. And we're able to uniquely deliver that combination of performance and power that people need for workloads like AI. Make it live for me. Is it an order of magnitude more power that you need at the edge if you're running AI? Well, it can be. If you use traditional solutions, it could be an order of magnitude more power that you need in order to run these workloads. And so our goal is to deliver up that extra performance, mm. but not increase the power envelope mm. because people aren't going to go and rip out their existing infrastructure. And frankly, uh, it's uh, not a sustainable approach to consume an order of magnitude more power. So our goal is deliver all that performance uh, and not require additional power. What's the split in the cost between, you know, uh, the OPEX of the whole thing uh, between, you know, buying the equipment and, and the power for the edge of the network? Is power a really significant uh, expense for, for operators? It is. I mean, it, that is a big factor here. Although what's interesting is that a lot of times the equation isn't necessarily about total cost of ownership and the OPEX. It, it matters mm. uh, if you can save on OPEX. But increasingly, it's actually just that there isn't enough available power mm. uh, in order to increase the compute using traditional techniques. So it's not really even about being just, able to pay for it. it. It's just, can you do it? Uh, and so increasingly that's become the big constraint is just power capacity and power delivery versus the cost of power. Mm. Well, you, uh, you're a former uh, uh, Intel alum. You were responsible for Xeon, which is, a, which is a big job. Now you're seeing the industry mm -hmm. from a smaller but powerful company, 1,500 employees. Um, 
Is it a very different experience for you? What are, the, what are the advantages of being inside that smaller organization? Yeah, I mean, I think one of the big advantages is that we can be very agile and we can respond when we see these types of big changes. You know, over the last year or two, obviously, AI has started to change everything. And so we've been able to really, really quickly adapt and expand out into other markets. You know, a couple of years ago, telco and edge weren't as big of a focus for us because there just wasn't a need for as much performance the way we were delivering it. But with the rise of AI, we were able to quickly, you know, expand, add the ecosystem of partners, and, and bring really compelling solutions into all these spaces. So I love the agility of Ampere. Mm. Uh, we've got a really innovative team of engineers, and it's been a ton of fun. You look happy. I am. Yeah, I am. Congratulations yeah. on all the success so far. You're definitely in a good spot. Jeff Wittick, Ampere, thanks so much for joining FNTV. Perfect. Thank you very much. Thank you.